So now that we've looked at how to hold the pick and uh, where where you're going to be picking, let's look at the motion that goes into flat picking. Now we'll start off with a couple things that you don't want to be doing. You don't want a lot of the motion coming from your elbow. It's like a, a fulcrum, and it takes so much motion to pivot that point that you're wasting a lot of energy and effort, and you're going to uh, increase the sloppiness, thing, increase the chance you'll screw something up. So this big range of motion, it's just it's just too much motion for trying to do this flat pick, this speed, speed or accuracy or both, whatever you're actually after at the moment. Um, it's just too big of a movement. Uh, the closer to being what you want, but still not aft, not right, is is the same sort of straight pivoting from your wrist. If you're just pivoting your wrist up and down, you're close, but it's not exactly what we want here. It is that's part of the motion. What it really turns out to be is a rotation. So there's a downward movement and an upward movement of the wrist, but there's actually rotation in the forearm. And I look at that as being driven, the downstrokes are driven by your thumb. Not push, not the pressure, but the thumb drives. It's like the steering wheel, so to speak. And, you, and you, you, it's the catalyst that pushes this forward, and your first finger is the catalyst that brings it back. So you end up with this sweeping motion. It's almost pendulum-like. It has a, a low point, I'm exaggerating it, but it has a low point in the center, and then it sweeps forward and back. And what that does is, is allow you to dip in, pick what you need, dip out, or dip back on the reverse pick, and get what you need. Cuts down on trying to stay out of the way of the other strings. It just increases your, your accuracy, and it makes for a smaller motion. It works whether you're covering multiple strings. <laughs> single note. So it's a rotation of the wrist. Got you get in, get out of the way, keep going. Since that rotation is occurring, um, if you are anchored at any point, some people will try to anchor with their pinky, some people try to anchor with their wrist on the bridge pins. Either one of these things are occurring, you're cutting down this range of motion. And you're asking for everything to come out of this thumb and first finger, which is asking for a lot of stress on that part of your hand. And uh, it's actually, it's almost like you're handcuffed to the guitar at that point. You just can't play fluidly. So what I'll do is I'll let my fingers drape down and they'll graze over the pick guard, which gives me that point of reference. Where am I at? How far away am I? not stuck in position, so if I need to move down and play, I can work my way down, work my way up, but I'm just, it's just simply a point of reference. Uh, the same way with with uh, my wrist on the bridge pins I use as a point of reference. I'm not tied to it, I'm not anchored to it, but I feel them under the, under the, under my wrist, and I know that I haven't moved, you know, moved out of position, I know where I'm at at all times, so point of reference, the wrist over the bridge pins, fingers over the uh, pit guard. And there are times when you get up and you have these middle parts of the strings. You'll see that it's like I'm anchoring. And I sort of am, but I'm anchoring up against the strings. Uh, which is, So if I need to come up, I can just release my hand and come higher, you know, I can relax that part of my hand and come higher, and if I need to go down, there's no friction, there's nothing holding me back. So it's a form of anchoring on these, on the, the treble strings, but it's not like a locked in position that your hand's got to pivot around. So no anchor. So this brings us up to some actual pick technique as far as movement goes. Um, the, the common, no matter what style we're talking about, doesn't have to be bluegrass or acoustic guitar or any, anything, it's just commonplace that you're alternate, alternating your picking. Down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the way it works. If you're only picking down, which is what a lot of beginners just naturally do, is the 
pick's uncomfortable at first, you know, it's the string, you're getting used to where the strings are at, mm -hmm. and there's a lot going on, mm -hmm. so it takes time to develop it. But mm -hmm. you really have to just accept that these are all elements that you really have to focus on, or you're going to set some major limits for yourself. So this alternating picking, I would start off by, if you're new to it, or if you just need to get cleaner with it and more comfortable with it, a great way to do it is a um, use your metronome and practice your scales. You should know, you know, especially scales you already know and things that you're comfortable with the left hand, you can really focus some time on the right hand. So I'm going to run through a C major scale here a few times just to give you an idea of what this would look like. Since I'm playing slow and deliberate, you can you notice that that rotation that we, that we talked about a few, a few minutes ago is pretty obvious in this. It's a small single string uh, rotation or single string pick attack, but it's so you have this shallow sort of narrow band that you're rotating at. I just can't stress enough how much running through your scales with the metronome and practicing your pick technique will really, really help your playing. Um, you can also graduate, another great thing to do is graduate up to, uh, to playing fiddle tune melodies or any sort of uh, 16th note or short note is what we're meaning. Uh, short note staccato melodies will help your pick attack because it just it's like rapid fire picking. You don't have to play it fast, slow, accurate, steady, and good. That's really what you're after. Speed comes at the end of this whole thing. So that would be something like um, <laughs> there I was anchoring on the I was holding up against the C string because I was playing just the beginning of that um, that melody part on on the middle or you know the lower end of the strings so my hand was spinning all of its time up on that end so by nature I've, I've raked up to this point and that's where I'm at it just adds a little stability when you're right there but uh, it doesn't slow you down it's just stability the uh, the next element here that you would graduate beyond just simple alternate picking down up down up down up would be a, you're really after a combination of that and you're in the end product would be the most efficient picking that you could possibly come up with so if you're anticipating your line and say it's <laughs> notice that I didn't just down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. I worked with, I worked in directions that made sense. I worked down, up, down and then I started off down again. Because that puts me in a downstroke at the end of that phrase. So it was down up, down up, down, down up, down up, down up, down. So I broke it off in phrases and it got me going in the right direction each time I needed to go somewhere. 